Welcome back everybody. It's been a while since I've done one of these schematic elements videos, so I figured it was time to do one and we're going to stay with the theme of modulation for this video, but it's going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to be looking at the phase 90 from MXR. And the phase 90 is what's called a phaser pedal or a phase shifter pedal, and we'll get into exactly why in a minute. But here's our schematic and we're going to start with the power section first just to get it out of the way so we can spend a little more time um, looking at the signal path. So our 9 volts in comes through a polarity protection diode, current limiting resistor and LED for indicating. These two capacitors are power supply filtering capacitors to get rid of any noise. These are the power pins for our op amp chips and then we go through a 10k resistor which combined with this 5.1 volt zener diode and 22 microfarad cap results in a 5.1 volt voltage for VB but the R27C12 creates a low pass filter low pass RC filter to reject noise so that our 5.1 volt bias voltage is not very noisy. Then we have a trimmer potentiometer of 250k here that is just a voltage divider so that right here we can set our voltage that will be our reference voltage and we'll take a look at where that gets used in a little bit. But before it, it actually becomes our volt, reference voltage net we go through a 1 meg ohm resistor to um, isolate what's consuming the voltage from uh, our um, voltage divider here so that we don't accidentally load anything down with the resistance to ground through here. So there's our power supply section. Relatively straightforward. We have three voltages that are going to be used in our circuit. And so now we're going to look at the signal path, our input comes in here and this pull down resistor I don't think is in the original circuit because it was designed in like the 70s or something but it's really important to have your pull down resistor just to kind of you know get rid of clicks and pops and stuff we go through um, a resistor and then a capacitor into the non-inverting terminal of our op amp here and because we're coming into the non-inverting terminal and there is just a wire connection between the output and the and the inverting terminal means that this section is a non-inverting unity gain buffer okay just a simple unity gain non-inverting um, op amp stage and we are biasing the non-inverting input with our bias voltage here through this 470k resistor. Okay, that is isolating the AC portion of our signal here from the DC portion, which is VB up here. Okay, so that results in our buffered dry signal coming into the circuit. Get rid of all of our markings. And so once we have our dry signal, the dry signal comes through a 150k ohm resistor which comes into this stage here. Okay, This is a transistor stage that uses a PNP transistor. You can tell it's a PNP transistor because the little arrow points into the uh, symbol. Okay, Which means we've got our emitter, we've got our collector, and if we look at how this is all set up, we have a 150k ohm resistor here, a 150k ohm resistor from this section, the output of this section down here, and then a 150k ohm resistor that is in this feedback loop. And so what this is doing is this whole section here is actually a summing amplifier because it's taking our dry signal from here, it's taking our wet signal if you will from here and it's summing them together so that at this point they are combined. 
This 56K R5 helps set the overall gain of this stage. And then C2 and R6 do two things. First is that C2 is a DC blocking capacitor, so we don't have any DC on our output. And R6 works as a pull down resistor, but there's also an RC filter here that helps to um, just gently filter the signal. In fact, this is a uh, this is a high pass signal, which means it's filtering out the super low frequency stuff, which means it's totally getting rid of DC, but also some of the super super low frequency um, signal, which there won't be much of because our input capacitor is only 10 nanofarads. So as far as the dry signal is concerned, it comes into the, the circuit through our non-inverting buffer. It is still unity gain here. It gets summed with whatever's happening down here and it goes out. Okay, so dry signal is pretty straightforward. However, our input buffer is also taking the signal and it's feeding it down to this part lower in the schematic here, which is doing this thing, okay? And so it is feeding into this block, which is kind of a funky looking arrangement at first look, okay? Because you're sending the signal into both the inverting and non-inverting terminals of the op-amp. However, if we go and look at a more simplified example, we'll see that what that stage is, is actually just a simplified, or is just a, uh, an active all-pass filter, okay? So this active all-pass filter takes our signal in. It goes through two identical resistors where the point where they meet is the inverting terminal. It also goes through a capacitor to the non-inverting terminal and a resistor to ground, and we have an output voltage here. And so you can see that R7 and R8 are identical values, and the point where they meet is the inverting terminal. We go through a capacitor, and then R9 comes down to VB. And I'm just gonna get rid of this figure. And VB, in this case, is our bias voltage, which the bias voltage in our um, circuit is actually our AC ground because we have biased the whole, the whole signal up to VB and then we put the AC on top of it. So just a real quick example, if this is ground and we have an AC signal that goes like this and then we bias it up to some voltage level, let's call this level VB, my drawing skills are amazing. If this is VB, then our signal now goes like this, where VB is what cuts through the middle, and so VB is where our zero crossing is. This is the AC ground, because we have biased the AC signal up onto that voltage, okay? So when we um, are connecting our signal through this resistor to VB, it's the same as the ground that we saw in our example drawing. However, you'll notice the one thing that's different between what we have and the simplified um, all pass is that we have this JFET in here. Okay. Now, this JFET is acting as a variable resistor because one of the cool things about a JFET is that the resistance between the drain and the source is something that we can control by the voltage we put on the gate. So as we vary the, the gate voltage, the resistance seen down through here changes. And there is a specific region for a JFET that determines what kind of voltage you have to put here. Um, and so uh, it depends on your JFET number, but also on the individual JFETs. You'll see a lot of vendors selling matched JFET sets 
for uh, phasers, and that is because you need them to all have the same characteristics and the same measurements so that when you put a specific voltage on the gate, the drain to source resistance is the same. And so if this JFET is just acting as a resistor, ugly resistor, but still a resistor, you'll see that we then have R9 and Q2 are in parallel, which means that as we change the resistance here, we're changing the overall resistance that is seen at this point. And when we change that resistance, we're actually changing what is called the corner frequency of our all-pass filter. If we look at the response of an all-pass filter, you can see that the magnitude, which is this blue line, is 0 dB all the way along, meaning that we are not adding or subtracting anything from the input signal in terms of magnitude. However, if we look at the phase, you'll see that the phase varies as a function of frequency. And the phase um, gets, so when we have a change in phase like this, we say the phase gets shifted. That's where the term phase shifter comes from, is the fact that we are shifting the phase of our guitar signal by putting it through this stage. And in fact, if we look, we have not just one, but we have four identical phase shifting stages here. And so the phase 90 is what's called a four stage phase shifter, because it is going through four phase shifting blocks. And what happens when we go through and we shift the phase some here and here and here and here is that we end up creating a very big dramatic phase shift. Okay, And by the time we get to the output of our last block here, we have now shifted the phase quite a lot. And so it comes up through this 150K resistor and it gets summed with our dry signal. Now when you take two signals and you sum them together, any place where they are 180 degrees out of phase is going to have a perfect notch in the response, meaning that at that frequency you get nothing. And so what's happening as we go through these different phase stages is that we are creating multiple notches that um, result when we sum with the dry signal. And then as we change the voltage on the gate of each of our JFETs here, we are making those notches move up and down in frequency. And so what happens is that that classic kind of whooshy phase shifter sound is all of those notches sweeping up and down in frequency based on the LFO. Before we get to the LFO though, there's one more thing to take a look at here in the signal path, and that is the fact that um, once we have gone through our phase shifting stages, we actually take some of that output here and we go through R19. In the original um, phase 90, this switch is actually just a wire connection, which means that we are now taking the output and feeding it back into the input of the second stage. When you add this feedback in there, it creates an even more intense effect. Okay, it gives it that really rich, deep kind of whooshing sound that happens with a good phaser. Whoops, I just made a random mark. But as I said, that only happens, you only get that whooshing sound if we are changing the frequency of the notches in time. And that happens with our LFO, which is this section up here. Okay, So you can see that VR is connected right here. And VR gets fed in up along here. Okay, And so our LFO is basically storing and discharging voltage 
in this cap C9. Okay, so the the charge on this cap gets the the voltage goes up and then comes down and then goes up and comes down depending on the re, the ratio of the C9 value to the resistance in this section. Okay? So we have a potentiometer here that we can change the resistance of this section, which changes how quickly um, cap C9 charges and discharges. If we turn the pot up, then it charges and discharges very quickly. And if we turn it down, it can be very, very slow. And um, so what happens there is that as this voltage here goes up and down and up and down, it's actually varying the voltage that is seen on each of the gates of our JFETs. And so as this voltage goes up and down, the resistance of the JFET goes up and down and is what creates the changing frequency, corner frequency of our all pass filters. Um, we have V bias that is connected here as our AC ground, as I mentioned before. Um, but we also have this DC blocking cap here so that V bias and V and V ref don't necessarily interfere with each other, but the AC portion of our LFO can still can essentially come here and it essentially gets grounded at this point, AC grounded, if you will, okay? So we don't have to worry about that at all. So as a quick recap here then, let me just get rid of my marks. So as a quick recap, what's really happening is that um, we are taking our input signal and we're buffering it. And right at this point, we have just a buffered unity gain signal. And we are shifting the phase of that signal by going through four phase shifting stages. And we are combining the dry with the phase shifted version, which results in notches at specific frequencies. And those frequencies shift up and down based on what the LFO is doing. And then we, we sum those and we send the signal out. So it's a fairly simple concept, but it can be a little tricky. The trickiest part really is the matching of these JFETs because if they're not perfectly matched, then what happens is your notches won't be as deep and so you won't get the really intense um, phaser sound that has been on you know countless recordings if if the notches are wider and shallower then um it's it's not quite it, it just doesn't sound quite right it's much more subtle which some people like but if you want subtle you can actually just change this resistor here for this resistor for a potentiometer that um allows you to dial in more or less of the signal here so that um, your notches get shallower or deeper and that way you can just have an intensity control. But that's really all there is to it. Um, it's a great circuit. It's been around for so long because it's really well designed and it sounds really great. I hope you found this useful and uh, I invite you to subscribe so that you're notified of the next one. Take it easy.